certainly like to welcome you again. Revival at Ebenezer. Well, what a service that we had last night. Appreciate the, I appreciate the Lord showing up for a service. I'm thankful to be back again this season. As we've already said, yesterday's gone. So uh, we've got a new day here. The Lord's given us a day that He has made. And whatever uh, the need may be here tonight, uh, we can't we can't get yesterday back, but, but we've got this seat. And of course, we're certainly thankful for Brother Terry being here and his Amen. wife, and thankful for you. Uh, uh, it's an honor for to have him here, and to, he came a long ways to to help to help us and uh, to help uh, our community. And and uh, as our mother in law son last night, uh, the White House. Uh, we believe that Ebenezer was set up as a lighthouse uh, for this community, that the, that the light of the glorious gospel, uh, Brother Billy, might go out into the lost and dying world. And uh, that someone that is, that is walking in darkness, uh, they might see that grand and glorious light. And, and I thought about we went to, we, we went to uh, Mammoth Cave on one of our get vacations once and and we went down in there, and they turned the lights off, and, and they let you see what that that cave darkness was look that looks like, and and you couldn't you couldn't see your hand in front of your, your face, uh, but you could see a little speck of light away off there when they one came on, and and I think about I think about the Lord, and I think about how in my soul, uh, they one day was darkness there, and buddy, there's a light that shined upon me. As the Apostle Paul went down the, uh, the Damascus Road, or Saul at the time went down the Damascus Road, and buddy, that great light shined about him. And, and I thought about there's no difference in him and me. That same light, Brother Terry, came one day and shined in my life, and, and I'm glad that it did. I'm glad it did. And uh, I, I'm glad he set his abode up down there, and yeah. I never to leave. He's never left me yet, and I don't think he ever will. But he set her up down there, buddy, and and he boils up sometimes. And like a, a good service like we had last night, the Lord comes up and he'll yeah. he'll show himself, won't he? But uh, we're thankful again to be here. I'm I'm looking forward to this service, and I'm glad to have all the churches that's represented. Glad to have all these preaching brothers. Glad to have. Brother Truman with us, one of the former pastors here at uh, Ebenezer. Certainly good to have him this same. Good to have him and good to have every one of you all. Again, I want to tell you that if you feel the, the need to come pro, uh, this altar's always open. The, the good man's done said that, and I believe it that way too. If you get that unction to pray while he's preaching or while, while someone's singing or whatever it may be, uh, you come on, it'll be all right. You you just uh, you obey the Lord in your life and uh, uh, meet Him at an old altar. And uh, I'm glad the one day I met Him there. But uh, uh, we're gonna get us another song, and we're gonna come around for a, a fellowship handshake and go farther into the service. <laughs>
should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, Amen. but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. I read one more verse. It says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not on him is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the, the only begotten Son of God. When we come down to the end of the road, it won't, it won't matter about how much money we've made or how much lands that we have or how good we've been to our neighbor or what we've acquired in this life. But the only thing that will matter is whether or not we believed in the Son. Believed in Him. And, uh, you know, I, I told the other night, um, the only thing that I truly know, now I, I think I know some stuff in here, but the only thing that I truly know is that one day I, I humbled myself and I know yeah. all. And I bowed before an all-knowing, all-seeing Lord. Amen. And I asked him if he would come into my life and save my soul. Amen. And he came in there and he set his abode up in my heart Amen. and in my soul. That is truly the only thing that I, that I truly know is what the Lord done for me one day. Amen. But I, I'll tell you, I guess... I guess I know that he can do it for you also, but I, I, without a shadow of a doubt, I know that the Lord came in one wow. day. Amen. And buddy, I, he, he became a friend of mine, and, and I, I believe I'm a friend that he is. And, and you know, on the great day of the Lord, I'm not going to try to get in her brother's way, but uh, you know, on the great day of the Lord, and when he comes on that cloud in that sky, I'm glad that he'd be looking for me. Amen. Not because I know him, but because he knows me. Amen. I through and by, I believe one day uh, to the saving of my soul. And, and you can talk to everybody around here. They, they know about Jesus, but I believe one day to the saving of my soul. Yeah. And you'll have to believe that too. Amen. You'll, have to, you'll have to believe that. Amen. That's what it takes to see uh, just a little measure of faith. Yeah, and, and you know, if I understand the scriptures right, he, he, he gives you that measure of faith to even believe in the beginning. Yeah. That we can step out. That we can step out. But I, I, I pray this evening, if you feel that unction, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, run to him, run that away. We wonder at this time if anyone might have a prayer request before we go on into the service. Take that so I can remember her. Someone else. Brother Thomas. Continue to remember her song later. Under the weather, we won't pray for him. By all means. Someone else. So uh, we talked to a lady in the uh, in the grocery store today. She's the, the daughter of Charles J. and Hazel Gooden. We wanna, her mother's her mother's pretty sick. We want to. I told her that we'd have the church to remember her. And, uh, Charles J.'s mentally exhausted. We want to remember him also. I'm gonna. Remember 
remember this service and those that may be lost here tonight and those that may be just on the verge. Maybe just on the verge last night. I pray that the Lord's Spirit comes back this evening and draws. Draws again. Someone else to see. Talk to uh, Paul Patterson. Someone else. Someone else. Sir Paul, we thank God for them here now. Thank you, Mother Paul, for taking that show. I'd like to ask Chris, many of my ten year old, they lost the, a great uncle yesterday, so we knew that thing was happening. Hey. Hey. Remember that. Someone else. Sister Lena, we sometimes let the situation get over or get the best of us. We'll look around and say, well, they've already been two or three songs sung, or it's getting late, or whatever it is. We need to obey the Lord, don't we? Amen. You want him to obey it when he comes up here, don't you? We all need to obey the Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, pray, pray. Someone else. Unspoken request by Sean Hamilton. Yeah, that's right. All 
certainly appreciate our youth this evening. Amen. Thankful for them and all the same. I'm glad that he'll pick us up and wipe off our sins and set us on our feet again. <coughs> Lord, let me preach here once about how he pick you up and he dust you off. Yeah. yeah. He sends you on. Uh, I'm glad that he can. You're here tonight. That's the issue. The Lord will pick you up. He'll dust you off. Put you on your feet again. And, uh, put you where you need to be if you're late. Be much in prayer for Brother Terry. I'm going to ask him to come on this evening. If he would. says with the heart man believeth unto righteousness 
and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, let me pause right there for a minute and I'll come back to this. Uh, I used to, kind of years ago, I used to wonder about that with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I'll tell you what I believe. I don't believe it's this mouth. Now, when we get saved, I believe we ought to tell it. Yeah. Uh, but the inward man's got a mouth, and uh, we talk to God with that mouth. Yeah. And I, I'll tell you, when I, I really uh, got that settled in my mind and heart, uh, I used to pastor a church up near Defiance called Pleasant View Baptist Church, where Denny Hunter's a pastor now. We had a deacon up there named Art Miller, and he was raised by a mom and dad that were deaf mute. And uh, they'd come to church sometimes, and then he had friends that would come. And uh, Art Miller, uh, he was uh, good at uh, doing sign language because that's how he communicated with his mom and dad when he was growing up. And uh, his mom and dad in time both got saved. And uh, there was a young lady, though, that came one time, and uh, she came to the altar weeping. Uh, I'd been preaching, and Art had been signing to her while I'd preached. And I, I could tell the Lord was in, using art because tears run down his face. And you could see God in him. This lady came to the altar, young woman, and she got saved. And uh, when she raised up, and I thought, what am I going to do? How, how am I going to uh, question her or, or find out if she really got? Uh, but she got up and uh, she looked all around. And she took her hand with tears streaming down her face. She took her hand and put it on her heart. And she looked up and pointed toward heaven. And when she pointed toward heaven, uh, uh, Charles, uh, the church went to shout. Yeah. I'm telling you what, it was with the mouth of her soul uh, that she talked to God. And God gave her a testimony, even though she couldn't speak. Yeah. And so, uh, getting back to this scripture, who hath believed our report? Uh, and to who is the arm of the Lord built? Sometimes uh, I ask myself, who's really believing? And, and again, I want you to know, I, I believed in my mind uh, before I ever got saved. And, uh, and I've already told you, I probably told this every night. I came to the altar six times before I got saved. I'm glad for the sixth time. I'm glad that I made it home. I'm glad God saved my soul. Uh, that was on a Saturday night. I didn't even tell the church that night, but uh, God was stirring my heart. Uh, by the time I got home, I told Mom and Dad, and of course they rejoiced. Uh, next morning, went back to church. And, uh, I don't know why I feel like telling this, but I do. Uh, next morning, went back to church. And when we came to the altar for all the prayer and fellowship, handshaking, the pastor said, Anybody uh, got anything you want to say? Uh, I raised my hand like I was in school. Uh, I raised my hand up. He said, Son, you want to say anything? And, and I said, Pastor, good. I said, I got saved last night. I want to church to get baptized. <laughs> I, I, I was real shy. And I wanted to get over with quicker than I could. Uh, but when I told it, I yes, felt Lord. heaven in my soul. And, and the, the, it shocked me uh, how much the church rejoiced when I told that I got saved. Uh, I didn't know uh, that they, uh, I, 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 they didn't have anything against me. I'm uh, positive. I didn't know they cared that much about me. But when they come around and shook hands with me, uh, they was crying and weeping and hugging me. Said, we love you. We've been praying for you. We had a burden for you. I thought, well, I, I didn't know they had a burden for me. That's the way the church works. Yeah. That's the way this church is working this week. And, and I'm sure all the time. Uh, boy, I tell you what, God's give this church uh, and even the visitors that's come been part of it has given a burden for the law. Uh, and I'm glad uh, God works through the grand old church. And, and I'm glad uh, we've got oh, something uh, to tell the world about. Uh, we have got a report. Uh, we have uh, got some things to tell the lost people. Yeah. Now, listen, now, down here in verse 6, uh, where it said we all like sheep have gone astray. Uh, we've all turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Yeah. All our sins was laid on Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm telling you what, uh, he took them uh, to the cross with him. Uh, yeah. well, I tell you what, uh, all of them, uh, over in Romans uh, 3 23, I quote that a lot. For all have sinned yeah. and come short of the glory of God. Uh, you can't go to heaven because uh, you're a good person. You can't even go to heaven because you come to the altar. Uh, if I'd have stopped coming uh, after I'd been there three or four times and never come back, I never talked to God, uh, never, I asked God to save me, I'd still be a lost boy. Uh, yeah. You need to know uh, when God does something in your soul. Yeah. Uh, there was a change that Amen. took place. It Amen. wasn't like lightning flashing or thunder rolling. Uh -huh. if, if I had to give one statement uh, to express how I explain how I felt when I got saved, uh, uh, it'd be something like this. The bad feeling lives. The hurt lives. Yeah. And I felt the joy joy in my soul. Yeah. That's how I felt when I got saved. Uh, uh, now listen, uh, everybody can have that. And so it talks down here. It talks about this down here. It talks about him. Uh, this is talking about Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm 
sure you Bible readers know that. But listen, Isaiah, the Bible scholar, I, I never mapped it out real close myself, but most of the Bible scholars uh, claim this prophecy was 500 or 600 years before Jesus was ever born. Uh, well, the preacher, if it was that long before Jesus was ever born, how did those people, how did Isaiah, uh, how did he know anything about that? Uh, that's not hard to answer. Uh, God said, I told him. Yeah. I, I preach this real often. Uh, God, uh, he knew what was going to happen before the foundation of the world. Before, before the world was ever made. Before, before Adam ever got his first bread. God knew man was going to sin. And he was going to sin his only begotten son. Uh, 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 oh, I read about he was going to send him to die on the old rugged cross yeah. and raise for the dead. Yeah. People like us could have salvation. Yeah. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm glad to be honored to be able to say I'm saved. Yeah. I'm saved. I'm saved. Yeah. I got a little saying I used to ever laugh sometimes. I just I use it here tonight. I know that I know that I know. Amen. I sound pretty positive, yeah. don't I? Yeah, that's what you was talking about earlier. A lot of things I, I think I know, a lot of things I'm not guessing. But I know that I know that I know Amen. that I'm a child of the king. Amen. What? Uh, people are really praying. And people that are praying, God's here in a great mighty way. And so it goes on down through here. Uh, let me get on down here uh, to verse 10. I read those others. Uh, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Uh, I'll tell you, I got a thought about that. Uh, it pre uh, pleased the Lord to bruise him. Uh, how would he bruise him? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why I think he was bruised. It's because he had the weight of the whole world's sins on him. And you talk about a heavy weight. You know, yeah. if he was under a real heavy weight, I'd yeah. bruise. Uh, just naturally speaking, and that's the comparison it's talking about. Uh, he, it pleased God to bruise him. It pleased God uh, to let all our sin uh, be put upon him. Yeah. Uh, you think about that. Uh, 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 you know, you think about him having all those, uh, uh, when he was out there, and they beat him so many ways. And, uh, this busy, that means the way he looked. He was marred more than that of any man. Based on that, I don't think this mother, I don't think Mary would have recognized him if she hadn't known who he was to start with. His visage, his countenance, the way his face looked, it was just a beat to pieces. But praise God, he was still a son of God. Well, let me tell you this. This is one of the most important points I need to make in this message. He, he did offer his body on the cross. But I'm going to preach tonight. There was more offered than his body. His soul was made an offer for sin. Yeah. Not right. just his body, yeah. but his very soul. Let me read that again and explain that. Get it, please, the Lord, to root it. He had put him up to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his day, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. I'm right. telling you what, that was because his soul was made an offer for sin. Uh, I become his seed. I'm one of his. Amen. I was not born according to the flesh, yeah. but born according to the spirit. Amen. Well, preacher, if you was born according to the spirit, have you got a, a spiritual mom and daddy? Yeah. Uh, God the Father and the grand old church, the bride, the man's wife. That's my spiritual mom and daddy. Yeah. Yeah. And so it took his soul. And going down the next verse, he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant uh, justify me? And so when he talks about the travail of his soul. Usually in the Bible, when the word travail is used, it's talking about a woman right, giving childbirth. Right. It's very tremendous pain. Well, I want you to know, uh, my Lord, he travailed in his soul with the agony yeah. that you and I would have an opportunity uh, to be born again. Yeah. What? A lesson to me tonight. Now, and we've said this about every night, but I really feel it tonight. Strong as any night I feel it. I believe there are some people can come to the altar right now. If you're here in the house of God and God's stirring your heart and talking to you, if you've never been saved, uh, don't wait till I get through preaching. Uh, if God's talking to you right now, come while the invitation's being made. See, it's God that makes the invitation. I, and I understand that we do this, there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, maybe after a while, uh, maybe if things go like they do sometimes, after a while I'll say, well, it's time to get Get a song. Uh, we want to offer an invitation. We want to have an invitation. We'll get everybody to stand up. We'll have them sing a good old invitation song. And that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Nice. But what I'm going to tell you is God's the one that makes the invitation. Yeah. Yeah. We can have everybody stand up and sing just as I am. If God wasn't in it, there wouldn't be any invitation. Yeah. But if God's moving in it, whatever's going on, yeah. preaching, singing, testifying, or, or complete cry, if God's in it, that's the invitation. Yeah. And so listen. Uh, I want you to get this. Uh, boy, uh, let me I'll get a little bit more of this down here. When it talks about there, uh, and listen, uh, 
Uh, therefore will I divide a portion with the, uh, with the great, and he shall divide uh, his spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. He was numbered with the transgression. Now, I'll give this comparison here. Maybe make a point or two here. It kind of makes sense. Uh, back under the law, if somebody sinned, uh, they'd take an animal. Uh, maybe they'd do a sin offering or a burnt offering. And they'd take that animal and uh, they'd kill it. And they'd burn that animal uh, on the altar. And they'd take its blood. And they'd put the blood on the horns of the altar. And then they'd pour out the rest of the blood around the base of the altar. The, the blood was poured out. And so the people then, uh, they had the vision of their sins being forgiven. But, but let me preach this to you. Uh, that blood of bulls and goats. Uh, you can read in Hebrew. Uh, yeah. chapter uh, 4 and verse 10 except yeah. for the blood of bulls and goats uh, could never take away their sins yeah. the blood of bulls and goats could never take away their sins well then why did they do that they did it but for a visual lesson appointing people to Calvary yeah. Well, wait a minute, uh, preacher. You think folks back there knew about Jesus? Well, this prophet uh, that was five or six hundred uh, years before Jesus, he knew about him. He yeah. prophesied about him. Amen. And Jesus said, uh, "Before Abraham was, I am." Yeah. And he said, "Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and he was glad." Well, I'm telling you what, I, I believe God uh, told everybody about Jesus Christ all the way up from Adam, uh, all the way down the line. Uh, why? Uh, because it takes the blood of Christ. Yeah. What does the Bible right. say? The blood of Christ cleanseth from A L L. The blood of Christ cleanseth from all sin. Amen. Bulls and goats couldn't get it done, yeah. but the blood of the Lamb Amen. that was yeah. poured out, that was offered and prevailed. That's yeah. what takes away sin. Do yeah. you believe it tonight? Yeah. Boy, you can't yeah. believe it. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Boy, I'm glad I'm saved. Yeah. And now, Amen. this is holy. That's all enough, preach. To get you, everybody stand up. Brother Paul Wayne, come. God's moving here tonight. And folks, do everything God wants you to do. Mind the Lord tonight. Christians, sinners, whoever you are, whatever God wants you to do, do it. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, and again, that's from the heart. That yeah. whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Man. If you want to go to heaven, you can. But you have to choose. Choose ye this day whom you'll yeah. serve. It takes a choice. Don't just stand back and say, well, maybe someday. Now's the day of salvation. Now's the acceptable time. Sing when you're ready. Somebody needs to come. Come on. Pray for this. Somebody needs to come. Come on.
years old. Will you come? Oh, we want to pray with you. Amen. You don't have to tell about oh, your sins. God already knows about it. It's not my business. You don't have to tell about your sins. You don't have to make a speech. You don't have to say anything if you don't want to. But if you're lost and God's calling, you need to come to him, my friend. Right now and right here. Oh, there's a saying out there that says, 
he that's talking about God made him that's talking about Jesus Christ yeah. to be sin for us yeah. 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 Sin. Now, now think about that <coughs> God made his son to be sin for us and Jesus Christ never did any sin never had a bad thought nothing wrong right. no guy found his mouth but here's the thing let me quote from the first but he made him to be sin for us who yeah. don't sin yeah. that we might be made the righteousness of God in him yeah. now you talk about being bruised I bet you that's our sin that ties right in with that talk about the weight that was upon Jesus Christ when he took upon himself the weight of the sin of the whole world he didn't have to. Uh, he just did it willingly. Uh, that was agreement in the Godhead before the world was. He did that because he loved us, and that was Amen. agreement with God. Yes, sir. And when that verse said, For God so loved the world, that's what that's talking about. Amen. I'm telling you what, uh, somebody needs to come tonight. But let me do this. I feel like doing this again. Did this one night. Follow me out of this place softly for just a minute with head bowed, nice and close. Did this one this way. Let me talk to you this way. And if you're here tonight, and uh, not trying to hide anything. I'm certainly not going to uh, embarrass you or come to you or anything like that. Yeah. But sometimes I think when we just, when it's about nice close, I think maybe we just feel a little bit more personal about it. And so anyway, if you're here tonight, I'm not going to embarrass you, not going to point you out, but if you're here tonight and you realize you need to get saved, you're a lost person, you need to get saved, and you like the prayers of the church, would you just raise your hand? Would there be one here who could do that? Just lift your arm up. Raise your hand. Say, but that prays for me. I appreciate that. Or would there be another one? Not going to point you out or anything. But just, just some, sometimes it just seems like it. That maybe makes people uh, feel a little bit closer to what they need to do. Uh, let me talk to you that are saved now, not where you need to be with the Lord. I didn't preach much to transgressors tonight. I've been a transgressor. I don't know what it's like. It's not any fun. But you don't have to stay a transgressor. God that loves you, He still loves you, and the church still loves you. If you're here tonight and you haven't been living for the Lord like you should, you, you don't have to be an outlaw or a bad person to be out of fellowship with God. I've sat on the front bench before and been out of fellowship. If you're here tonight and you're out of fellowship with God, you, you know you really are needed, and you are. And you know you need to get back in. Would you raise your hand and say, pray for me? Oh, I appreciate that hand. Yes, yes, I do. And, and I appreciate that hand. Any more, I, I appreciate that hand. Yeah. Would there be another one? Watch well, touch my heart. Yeah. That's touched my heart. I appreciate that hand. I really do. Any more? Well, let me sum it up this way again. Uh, I'll just lump it all together. If you haven't raised your hand already and you just realize that there's something wrong in your relationship between you and God and you want to be in on those prayers, would you just raise your hand? Any more? Boy, I appreciate those folks. Boy, that's a bunch. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Now, raise your hand and open up your eyes. I'm going to say in just a minute. I'm going to say another word or two. In just a minute. We're going to sing again. But I want to beg you and I want to plead with you tonight. Now, that's a good, honest answer. I appreciate people being willing to uh, speak up uh, and raise their hand. That's, that's a kind of a message in itself. Yeah. Now, listen tonight. And, and, and I'm not trying to put you on a spot or twist you on. But I want you to think about this. You've already, you've acknowledged it. And I praise God for you. I'm not, not, not downing you. I praise God. But let's take one more step tonight. Yeah. If you're here tonight and know you're not where you need to be, then I'm telling you what, this is a precious pleasure. These folks are praying people, and God's a prayer answer to God. Let me beg every one of you tonight that's not where you need to be with the Lord. Uh, please, while we sing this song, and the rest of you need to come too, come on. But uh, my focus right now, those that raise your hands tonight, while we sing this song, will you take one more step and come and get it fixed between you and the Lord so you can be a help to the church. You can be a help to your family. You can be a help to your friends. You can be a blessing to God. Praise God. We need to have an altar for my folks. I believe it'll be a turning point if people just step out and come to the Lord. I really believe that. I believe it'll be a turning point. It'll help somebody. Let's go. 
about the spiritual part, they were more important than the mental. So that's that's my idea. So I thank you and uh, I just love you folks and I, I just are your prayers, even when we're not with you. I believe you do pray for us when we're in your prayer. And so we pray it and uh, I'm hoping uh, in a few days, uh, I know Brother Paul Wayne, I'm, I'm hoping in a few days because Brother Terry got some good news. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for it. Bye. Bye. 
I you know, know who he just don't yeah. understand. God, call, Why call. I cry when I get happy. Oh. Why I shout yeah. oh. and raise my hand. Amen. Oh, they say they found a new way. Right. One that's better than before. But as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord in this day of modern theory. Man has tried to explain the way. The old King James Version, they say it's outdated. The modern versions are better, they say. But I've made up my mind to go on yeah. with Jesus, the land. family for sake. And friends, they may scorn, but as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Though the world says I I know they just don't understand why I cry when I get happy, why I shout and raise my hand. Oh, they say they found a new way, one that's better than before, but as for me, and my house will serve the Lord. fellas that's lucky to have two pastors. Uh, three said the long maiden on Sunday morning to me on Sunday night and Brother Jim Barber on Wednesday night. Now, he's really blessed. Uh, he, he gets fed too. <laughs> Gotta go somewhere on Appreciate it. Okay. What else? Father, I thank God for this week. Now, thank them for the burdens that's still left with me. Yeah. I know one of these days I'm going to see it come. Yeah. We may be going to end a revival tonight, but the burden goes on. Amen. Of course, we wouldn't be living another day or so. We're going to we're going to have it again some tomorrow. Praying for that. It'd be good to hear. I may not have to preach Sunday morning. They just be a little testimony of the people got saved. 